Hi, family. Happy Friday, TGIF, for real. I'm so happy that it's Friday. It has been a long week with lots and lots of stuff going on in the world. Uh, with the elections and everything. Well, obviously not just this week, but just in general. So much has been going on in the world. A lot of changes and transitions. And Man, I tell you, 2020 has been the year that never ends, right? And we're getting ready to roll into 2021. And... Uh, usually when there's a year getting ready to transition, I'm super excited. I've got brand new goals and I'm like, Oh, what is this year going to bring? And to be honest, I'm like, I don't really know to be excited about 2021. <laughs> I don't really know to be high to be excited about 2021. Cause I don't really know how much is going to change in 2021. But here's what I do know is that God will never change. And I wanted to get on here today and talk to you guys about something that's been on my heart because as I've made a lot of changes, as the Lord has been maturing me and revealing things to me over this past year, I've had a lot of questions from people, which is great. It's great to ask questions. It's great to get an understanding. That's what God tells us to do, that you should never take anything at face value, no matter who's saying it, that you need to test the spirit by the spirit, take every thought captive by Christ and test whether that thing be true. And so I really love that people are um, inquisitive and that they have questions. I also really love um, uh, the honesty that I'm seeing in a lot of people, a lot of professing believers who um, are, are questioning their faith. And what I mean by that is they are questioning why they believe what they believe. They're questioning why they're doing the things that they're doing and they're seeking after truth. And that's amazing. That is amazing and that is awesome and that is what you should do. And um, I encourage you to continue to seek after the Lord with all of your mind, body, heart, and soul. I, I challenge you to challenge your theology and your indoctrination and see whether that be from Christ or a doctrine of men or devils. I challenge you to do it and to do it unapologetically because you're talking about your soul. You're talking about standing before God on that day of accountability and giving an answer for every hidden thing and every visual thing and every thought, word, and action indeed. And you need to know why you believe what you believe and why you're doing what you're doing. And let me tell you, true faith isn't about getting along to get along. True faith is not following the pack. True faith is seeking after the ways of the Lord and believing his word over everybody and everything else. That is what we are called to have faith in, that we hear the teachings of Christ, we learn and glean from the Holy Spirit, and we believe it like a child. You can tell a child anything, and they will believe you at face value. Why? Because they haven't been jaded by the world yet. They haven't been, um, you know, been through things that caused them to doubt. And they have this childlike faith that you could tell them anything and they'll believe you. And God wants you to have that same childlike faith when it comes to him and his ways. See, and a lot of us have that childlike faith. But that childlike faith is often given to the wrong things. It's not given to God. It's given to things of God. It's given to men and women who profess to be of God and teaching things of God and institutions that have a form of godliness. But a lot of us don't take what God says as face value. And even if we believe the things of God to be true, we believe it's true. A lot of us struggle to believe it's true for us. A lot of us do not believe who God says you are. A lot of us do not believe and embrace the truth. A lot of us reject it. Even though we may say we believe it's true, we reject it as truth because we make it not true for us. We don't believe that it can be true for us. And so we reject the truth, the truth that could save us. And so today I want to talk to you about something that God has placed on my heart. Um, and one of the things he taught me this year is, Crystal, it is your responsibility 100% to take ownership over your faith. It is nobody else's job to make sure you have the truth. It is your job to make sure you have the truth. It's not a pastor's job. It's not a televangelist's job. It's no prophet's job or whatever. No author of a book. Nothing. It is your job to know. Nobody is with excuse. Okay? Because God gave all of us a brain. God gave all of us some level of intellect and the ability to seek after him. Every single creation of God, every human being 
has the ability to seek after truth and find it. Everybody. So it's nobody else's responsibility to make sure that you know the truth is yours. It's yours. And God said that to me. It's yours. If you want to know, Crystal, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. But do you really want to know? Or do you just love your bubble? Okay? And so I want to go over that with you guys today because here's the truth. God is faithful. There is nothing that God has said that he would do that he hasn't already done or will not carry, carry out. Because he's not a God that he should lie. So everything God does and says will come to pass. It will. And he's faithful. And here's the thing, you guys. A lot of us misinterpret. Um, a lot of us take teachings that we have heard passed down from men and women and believe it is truth. And we are lazy Christians. We are casual Christians. And when I say Christians, I use that word loosely. Because a lot of us do not care to take the time to study to show ourselves approved. A lot of us do not take the time to test everything by the spirit. And we have grown up in a world that teaches us to trust man and women at face value. But then when it comes to God and he starts revealing to his way, we reject it as truth because it doesn't line up with the people that we respected in our lives. Okay. And so a lot of us are blind leading the blind and just leading each other into ditches and leading each other down these massive roads of destruction. And we are not willing to humble ourselves and go to the throne of God and ask him for his ways. And when he starts to reveal them to you or he starts to use different men and women of God to profess the truth that's been revealed to them, it's often rejected. It's often scrutinized because it goes against this very broad way of teaching that Christianity has produced. And so if you don't study for yourself and you don't seek after God for yourself and you don't listen or learn how to hear from the Holy Spirit, um, then it's very easy to believe every wind of doctrine that comes blowing your way. And so I'm, I'm just trying to encourage you guys. It doesn't have this journey with the Lord. Um, he's clear. I mean, God is not uh, confusing. He's very clear. Um, and it's very, um, very um, clear. I don't, I don't know what other word to say. What his expectations are. Um, what his ways are. He's very clear on that. The thing is, do you believe it and will you obey it? So I wanted to take you guys through a couple of scriptures that just talk about whose, whose responsibility it is to, um, whose, whose responsibility your faith is. Who does that responsibility fall on to know what thus saith the Lord? Okay. And so I want to take you through a couple of scriptures uh, where God is very clear on whose responsibility it is. So we're going to look at 2 Timothy. So we're going to go to 2 Timothy first in the Word. Okay. So we're going to look at 2 Timothy. Give me a second. 2 Timothy 2.15. Okay. It says right here. And this particular text is talking about approved and disapproved workers, okay? So here, I'm going to start at verse 14, actually, and it says here, Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. So first of all, anything that is done in the Lord is never about flipping a profit. Christianity is not a harlot. It's not to be, the body of Christ is not to be marketed and sold and flipped for a profit. Okay. That is not the salvation of the Lord is free. The teachings of the Lord are free. Okay. So modern day American Christianity has really in a lot of ways prostituted the body of Christ for a profit, for a profit. Okay. And I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm not saying that to be harsh. But when we take the body of Christ and yoke it to things that he did not give us authority to so that we can have a profit margin, there, that's not what the teachings of Christ say the body of Christ is supposed to be doing. Okay? And so be diligent. Here's what the Lord says. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. Who is he talking to? You. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker 
who does not need to be ashamed, who is rightly dividing, or other others say rightly, rightly discerning, dividing, and handling his truth, the word of truth, which is Christ. Okay? And here's what he says. Shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Okay? And so a lot of what you see in, in Christianity today is a lot of people who profess to love God, who profess to believe in God, but are still living in filthy lives, still living in sin, still struggling in sin. And now I'm not saying this because, oh, I'm so righteous and I've got it all together. I'm saying this because if God's word is true and we learn how to rightly divide his word, it produces righteousness. Not our own righteousness, not our own good works and deeds. Okay, those fall short. God says those are a filthy rag. But it produces his righteousness. Okay, so truth produces righteousness. Okay, whatever seed is planted, that's the type of fruit you're going to get. So you cannot have truth and produce a sinful life. It just, it does, it's not, it's not true. Okay, any more than you can have seeds of deception and live a life of righteousness. It's not going to happen because what you believe is what will manifest. Okay, so if you believe God, his word is true, it's going to produce righteousness because he is righteousness. The truth of God is the righteousness of Christ and therefore it produces and bears that fruit through you as you walk in obedience to the Holy Spirit as he calls you out of those things that are not of God, that are not holy, that are not righteous, okay? And so be diligent to present yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth and shun anything else that is not truth. That's what God teaches. Okay, but we live in a world that says, well, everybody has a form of truth. And so we just, you know, take take the little truth that they're giving us and we just excuse the falsehoods. No, 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 no. He says, shun what is not true. Profane babblings, idle babblings, because they produce ungodliness. See, truth, coming into the truth of the Lord and the ways of the Lord is what sets us free. There is freedom in Christ, Christ alone. Not freedom in half-truths, okay? And so there is this teaching across Christianity that nobody has the full truth. That's a lie. It's a lie because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And if he is the way, the truth, and the life, there's only one truth. But the problem is we have forms of truth. We have all of these schisms and divisions and teachings of men that have forms of truth or levels of truth. Okay, and so that's why you have so many different religious sects and organizations in the world. But Christ said there is one way and he is that way and nobody coming to the father but through him because he is the truth. He is the way and he is the life. And so some of the arguments that I've heard out there was if you believe that Jesus Christ is the savior of the world, then that's all that matters. That's the foundation of our faith. Well, yes, but what is the truth of Christ? Not that he just was, but he is. And he has a very specific way that he calls his saints to live. That he calls his saints into the things that he separates us out of. Okay? And so it's not enough to just believe that Christ is or was, that he did die, but to walk in obedience to that truth. Okay? Because here's the thing. You guys know that scripture that says, raise a child up in the way they ought to go, and they will not depart from it, right? God uses types and symbols, okay? He gives us the dynamics of family to understand his relationship with his people, okay? And so what God does, what the Holy Spirit does, is it trains us children, children of God, up in the way that we should go, that we would not depart from it. Why? Because he says, children, obey your parents, because when you obey your parents, your days will be long, right? If you disobey your parents, your days will be short. So what the Lord is saying is that the way that the Lord leads us in leads to life. Okay, the ways of our self, the ways of the world, the ways of Satan lead to destruction. Okay, so God says walk in righteousness because it leads to life. So everything God does produces a wholeness. Everything God does calls us out and consecrates us. So as we learn to walk in that truth, we are consecrated for God. And therefore, we, he keeps us off the paths that would lead to destruction. 
okay? And so let's also look at Romans 12 and 2 that also let us know whose responsibility it is to, um, whose responsibility it is over your own faith, what you, what you believe and what you obey. Okay, so we're going to look at Romans 12 and 2. Okay, Romans 12 and 2 says, I will start at verse number 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, whose responsibility it is, you, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Other versions say, which is your true and proper worship. Okay, so you are called to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. So whose responsibility is it to prove what the good and acceptable, perfect will of God is? You are. You cannot put your soul in somebody else's hand. You cannot just trust all of these religious leaders and all of these people who profess to have these connections with God at face value. You can't do it. Your soul is too precious. Okay? There is truth out there. There is salvation out there. There is the way of the Lord that leads to life, that leads to the, to the narrow path. There is. But it's nobody else's responsibility to seek after it and then to obey it once you find it, but you. So when you stand before God, some of us, and he's going to say, I never knew you. And you're like, well, I did everything my pastor told me to do. I did everything these religious leaders told me to do. I did everything these denominations taught me that I should do. And he's going to say, I never knew you. I never knew you. Go far from me, you worker of iniquity. Okay? And so it's your responsibility to seek after the truth. It's your responsibility to then believe it and then obey it. Nobody else can do that for you. There is no hand-me-down faith. There is no, you can borrow some of my oil. No, you need to go get your own oil. And this is why we can't be haughty and proud as believers of Christ and thinking that it's us that save somebody. We do not have the power to save. We do not have the power to save. That is the work of Christ and Christ alone. Our job is to be that spiritual farmer, plant that seed and point people to the source of which where we have gotten our oil, which is Christ and Christ alone. And so all our job is, is to plant the seeds God grants the increase. So none of us can be tooting our own horns talking about, look at all of the stuff that I've done for the Lord. It's not you. It's by his loving kindness that a person is changed. It is by him that a person is set free and delivered. Not you. You are a vessel being used by the Lord as a map to the Lord. But we are not creating disciples of ourselves. This is not about uh, you and your ministry and making your name big and popular. No, he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw. So be careful when you start putting yourself in the position of God and you start taking the throne of God and you think that people can't have access to God unless they come through you or your organization or, or you become, become the Holy Spirit in other people's lives. That's not your job. Your job as a believer of Christ is to point people to where you found the truth, right? And so it is the individual's job and responsibility and accountability and ownership to seek after the Lord for themselves. Now, can you encourage somebody? Yes. I'm not saying you can't encourage or glean from somebody else, but you better take whatever you hear and test it. You better take it and test it. I'm telling you guys, please do not be a casual Christian. Do not be lazy in your pursuit after the Lord and his truth. Okay? And so I also, um, there's a couple of other scriptures I wanted to take you to. So let, let me see. I, th I think the next one was Philippians 1 and 6. Okay. 
Oh, so here's where I wanted to encourage you. Here, here's what happens. A lot of us come into truth, right? Because God says that he will not return until everybody has heard the gospel. Okay, so every human being in the world at some point in time along their journey will come into the truth. Okay, and as we know, that truth can be plucked up, choked out, right? And so everybody comes into the truth at some point, but not everybody chooses to walk in it, okay? So everybody comes into it. They might come into the knowledge of God. They might come into the truth of who Christ is, but not everybody will walk in truth. Not everybody will obey the truth. Not everybody will abide in Christ, live and walk with him daily. Not everybody will do that, okay? And so what I want you guys to know that God taught me is that he is faithful to finish whatever he starts, okay? But he does not force himself on people, okay? So he says you got to become a lover of truth and you need to, if you love me, then obey it, okay? But he doesn't force it on you. He doesn't make you do it. He doesn't shame you into doing it. You have to ask him to create in you a new heart. You have to become a lover of the things of God. You have to become a lover of truth. You have to become a seeker of truth and then walk in it, okay? And so I just want to encourage you guys that God is faithful. It's never about his faithfulness. It always comes down to ours. It always comes down to our obedience, our lack of. Okay, and usually a lack of obedience really comes down to misguided teaching, really comes down to false doctrines, really comes down to um, rejecting the truth as being true for you. Okay, because when you believe something, you walk in it. Okay, you get in your car, you turn that thing on and you drive it because you believe that it's going to run. Okay, when the light turns from red to green, you push the gas in your car because you believe that every other car is going to stop and you're going to be able to go through that intersection because the light said it's green and you can go and you believe it. So if it says go, you go. So whatever you truly believe, you will obey. That's just, that's gen, that's not even just talking about faith, but or it is really a definition of faith, but I'm not, I'm not just talking about in terms of God, whatever you believe you act on. Okay, you won't sit on a chair unless you believe it's going to hold you up. So you have faith that chair is going to hold you up. Therefore, you sit in it. You take action. Okay, this is not me preaching self-righteousness. This is talking about the what faith produces is righteousness. See, we're not just saved from sin. We're saved to righteousness. Okay, so we are saved from sin. And the, whole, and, and, and the Holy Spirit, you guys, does not leave you in sin, okay? Because God is faithful to finish what he started in you if you want to follow him, okay? So he says here, be confident on this very thing. Well, let's start here. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making a request for you with all joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident on this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it into the day of Jesus Christ. Okay? Other versions say into the day of the Lord. Okay? Or to the day of salvation. See, when you come into truth and Christ calls you to walk in that truth and he gives you the Holy Spirit to help you walk in truth, walk out of corruption, walk out of deception, overcome your flesh, die to yourself daily and follow after him. That's what the Holy Spirit does so that you may walk on that narrow path that leads to life until the day of salvation when God comes and redeems what he's put a deposit on with his blood. So... What God is teaching me is that salvation is not an event. Salvation is a walk. It's a walk. It's not just a blanketed statement of profession that Christ is true. It's walking in obedience to that truth if you believe it. And so it's not just an event where you profess Christ is your savior. If he is your savior, then you walk in obedience with him. 
Okay. And so he calls you to holiness. He calls you to righteousness and he gives you the supernatural power through the Holy Spirit and through renewing your mind so that you understand who you are in him and the authority that you have in him. So you're not walking around defeated, constantly stumbling all the time. He strengthens your spiritual muscle and your spiritual discernment so that you learn to leave those things alone that would lead you on a path of destruction and so that you would stay on that narrow path that leads to life and righteousness, okay? And so when the day of the Lord comes, he's going to come and redeem that which he's put his deposit on, okay? So I just wanted to read that to you. Um, so all of the Lord's ways, lead to life and holiness any and everything else that is not of the lord leads to destruction okay leads to destruction um and so i just want to read a couple things to you as well because a lot of people will preach that it doesn't matter what you do if you believe in jesus christ then that's it you're good right but there is obedience. He's not just our savior. He's also our Lord, right? And it's not because, oh, he just wants you to, you know, he's just trying to tell you what to do. And no, he knows what's best for you as a father. He knows what's going to lead you down the right path. And that's why he wants you to learn to trust him and to obey him. Otherwise, he says, you're like a pig returning to your own vomit. You continue in sin that grace may abound. No, Paul says, no, you don't continue in sin that grace may abound. Okay. And so a lot of us are walking around defeated and oppressed, constantly struggling, struggling and going around the same mountain. Because we don't really know who we are in the Lord. And the reason we don't really know who we are in the Lord is because the truth is not really being preached. Okay, and so a lot of us are, 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 are hearing a different gospel than the one that the Lord actually preaches. This is why you've got to study to show yourself approved. Okay, and so um, I want to read to you James 1.22. And just to encourage you guys, excuse me, just to encourage you guys that God is faithful. It's never a question of his faithfulness. It's never a question of the potency of his truth. It has to, it comes down to what you are believing as truth. And for some people, it's not even what you're believing is true. It's that you don't believe it's true for you. You discredit yourself. And when you do that, it really is pride. Because when you say to God, what you say is not true for me. You put yourself in the position of God. And a lot of times we think to walk in shame, to walk in, um, uh, sometimes we think if, if I'm not good enough for God or we, or we put, convince ourselves in our head that we're worthy, that that's somehow humility. It's really pride because pride is anything that positions itself above the authority of God. So if God says, this is what's true, and you come along and say, yeah, maybe for them, but not for me. Then that's pride. And pride cometh before a fall, my friends. Okay? And so we need to learn to love and embrace what God says is true. And that truth will free you. That truth will is what saves you. That truth is what consecrates you and separates you out from those things which God's wrath are coming for. Okay? So it's not that God is asking for you to be fearful of him in, in terms of terror, although you should be, because like that he could wipe us all out. What God is asking for is reverence that you take him at his word. You believe that he will do what he says he will do, and you don't doubt it. And you, be, you learn to develop a childlike faith where you believe the Lord at what he says, and you don't question it, you just obey it. And that takes time to build that muscle. Right? You know, and as the Lord began this year to reveal to me the truth about the church system and there's these religious systems that are from men, it was hard for me to believe. I don't want to believe it because it's all I've ever known. I'm like, how could all these great people be caught up in deception, Lord? How could I be caught up in deception? How could these things not be of you? Like, there's so many people who are in this systematic religion and who are believing all of these doctrines. And I tried to justify it and I tried to, like, make it good. And God said, it's not of me. And if it's not of me, it's wicked. That's what an iniquity is. It's wicked. It's godly. It's godly. It's godlessness. It's um, lawlessness. Even though it looks good, 
And that's how crafty the enemy is, you guys. But eventually the Lord came to me and he said, you're either going to believe what you asked me to reveal. You asked me for the truth and I revealed it to you. And I confirmed that thing for you, Crystal. You're either going to believe it or you're not. Because at the end of the day, truth is truth. And you either believe it or you don't. You're either going to obey it or you're not. And that's your choice. That's your free will. But see, sometimes our free will causes us to be rebellious. Causes us to reject the truth. Causes us to put ourselves in the position of God. Causes us to doubt God. Okay? And so we have to become like children. And believe what he says is true. And then walk in it. But a lot of us love people more than God. A lot of us love people more than God. And so it's hard for us to believe the truth. Or see something as what it is. Because we don't feel worthy to, and we call it judging people. Okay, you guys, the kind of judgment that God tells you not to do is the judgment that is of condemnation. Okay, the judgment that God calls us to is called discernment. Okay, discernment is nothing more than judging something. Discerning whether it be of God or not. And a lot of us twist that. And so we think that if we are walking in obedience to truth or if God reveals something that is deception and, and we call it out or we choose to believe it that we're condemning people, you can't condemn anybody because you are not the sovereign God of the world. You don't have a heaven or hell to put people in. So you don't even have the, the ability to condemn anybody because you don't have the right. You don't, you don't have, you didn't create this. So, I mean, even if you say, oh, you're going to hell, that, that is a misguided thing for you to say because you don't have the authority to do that. But what you do have the authority to do is judge in terms of discernment and being able to test something by the Spirit to see if that thing be of God or not. So every human being has the ability and the right and the authority to discern. And then when God reveals through the Holy Spirit, if that thing is of him or not, you have the authority to dissociate from that thing. And that's not judging under condemnation. That's discerning what's of God and what's not. What the good and perfect will of the Lord is. And every believer, every human being is called to do that. Because all of us will stand before the Lord. All of us will. So you... Please don't put your faith or your soul in the hands of human beings. Seek after God for yourself and come into that truth for yourself and then obey it. And do not try to justify things you once did or things you were once a part of because you're afraid of being scrutinized. Would you rather deal with the wrath of people or the wrath of God? And God doesn't even call you into obedience because he wants you to come into obedience so that you're spared of his wrath. He wants you to come into obedience because you understand that he first loved you. And that love produces life. He, de he desires that none would perish. Everything God does is not because he's just some mean God sitting on a throne somewhere. He's trying to save and preserve that which he created. But we're so rebellious. We, in essence, really condemn ourselves because we are rebellious and we lack the ability to walk in truth. And we don't even study to see if what we're following is truth. We just believe it and then anybody challenges it. Anybody challenges what you think is truth or what you've been taught is truth becomes a problem. Becomes a problem or um, stirring the pot or causing issues. And it's like, okay, well... Uh, I never asked you to follow me. I asked you to study for yourself and seek after the truth for yourself, right? And I'm going to I'm gonna walk in obedience to the Lord because I love him and I fear him. I, I reverence him. And so I'm going to follow him every time, every time as I learn to walk in obedience, okay? And so um, I wanted to... Uh, take you to, oh, I was taking you to James. Sorry guys. Okay. So it's taking you to James. There's so many, um, just really encouraging scriptures about, you know, 
seeking after the Lord for yourself, you guys. We can't be we can't afford in these times to be lazy. We can't afford in these times to just rest on religion and what the pastor says. And and I'm not speaking against those who who take up that position. I think a lot of them have pure intentions of heart, but pure intentions of heart don't save a soul. Good intentions don't save a soul. You guys, going to church is not having a relationship with the Lord. And too many people think that. Too many people think being associated with some type of institution that wears the name of Christ means you know God, means that you have a relationship with him. It doesn't. And a lot of us, and, and myself included up until recently, equated faithfulness to God with faithfulness to an organization or a group of people. And that's not what Jesus teaches. That's why you got to study for yourself, okay? So I'm going to take you to James 1.22 and then we'll kind of wrap up here, okay? So James 1.22 says this, or let's start at 21. Therefore, lay aside all filthy, filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is also able to, to save your very soul. Okay, so as God reveals to you what his truth is, what the word, the living word of God is, he says, then you must lay aside all filthiness and the overflow of wickedness. So anything that God reveals is not of him. You are then called to lay it aside and not have anything to do with it. That's what he teaches. That's not me. That's what he teaches. And he said, receive with meekness. See, nobody that has come into truth can ever be prideful or arrogant because it's only the grace of God that you came into that truth. And, and because you've come into that truth, then you should share that truth because that truth sets you free. It's the truth of God that saves your soul. And so it would be prideful to not preach the truth. It would be prideful to not testify of how the Lord called you into truth. But nobody can take a position of pride and arrogance because it's only the grace of God and the loving kindness of God that drew you. So he says, with meekness, with meekness, receive that implanted word, which is able to save your soul, save your soul. And, and listen here, but be doers of that word and not hearers only, lest you deceive yourselves. And see, a lot of people are hearers of the letter, but they don't obey the word. They don't obey the spirit of God. They don't walk in life. Okay? So they're only hearers. And so therefore they deceive themselves. You guys have to please study. They deceive themselves because they think because they've heard the word that they've been saved. But he says you cannot only hear this word, you must also be a doer of the word Okay, because it is that word that saves your soul. That word save means wholeness. Okay, that word save means deliver. So God, his truth brings you into wholeness. It brings you into deliverance from what? Sin unrighteousness and wickedness, those things that entrap you, those things that lead you to destruction, those things that cause you to self-destruct, okay? God saves you from those things. He delivers you. He brings you into wholeness. He brings up the dross in your life to bring you into the wholeness that is him, okay? And so it's not enough to just receive the word or to just hear the word, but you must also be but you must also be doers of the word, lest you deceive yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what he even looks like. So a lot of us hear the word of God and then get up and go about our daily lives and forget what we've even heard. That truth gets plucked or choked out. And that's why he says it's not enough for you just to hear the truth. You must obey it. You must obey it. Or unless you're like a man who looks in the mirror and forgets, walks away and forgets right away what you look like. 
because it gets plucked out of your mind. You get distracted, right? God, see God, man, we can't do it without the spirit of God. We can't walk in consistency without the spirit of God. He brings to remembrance. He convicts us of all the things of God. That's why you got to learn to walk with the spirit. It's really freeing because it's not about you learning to lean on yourself. You're not being obedient in yourself, but you're saying to the Lord, I lay myself down and I pick up my cross and I follow after you and you learn to yield to the Holy Spirit. Okay. And so what happens is the Holy Spirit starts directing you and guiding you in the ways of the Lord. So it's not you striving to do it. It's not you working so hard to be good for God. Good Lord. Nobody can be good. He said, there's not one. Okay. But when you learn to be obedient to the spirit of God, he navigates, he drives the car. You're the passenger and you're going along for the ride. And you're simply saying, yes, I'm going to go. And then you follow him. Okay. And so, um, let me also read first John two seventeen to you guys. Okay. And then we'll kind of wrap up. I'm just trying to show you how simple it really is. It really is simple. It really, really is. Okay, 1 John chapter 2, 17 says this. Um, let's start at 15. So it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. Sometimes the hardest thing for us to embrace is when God reveals to us things that we've been doing in our spiritual walk that we thought were of him, but they are in fact of the world. Sometimes that's hard for us to accept. Um, sometimes at first when you're coming into the truth and God reveals to you the things that you've been believing that are lies or deception, it's hard. It's hard on our ego. It's hard on our pride. It's painful and it hurts because you were doing all of these things because you love God. But you see, the way that we love and the way that God's, what God's definition of love is, is different. Okay. And so when God brings you into that truth, he says, if you love me, then obey my commandments. Okay. So what God requires, his expectations of us, a lot of times breaks down our pride and our ego. And that's hard for us because we are naturally, as human beings, egocentric. We're self-centered. And um, we don't like being told what to do. We don't like to be corrected. And so we're, we're naturally rebellious. And we have to ask God to help us with our rebelliousness. And that's why he gives us the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit helps us learn to obey, obey God. And helps us to humble ourselves. Humbling yourself just means placing your authority under God's and believing what he says is true and placing yourself in submission to it. And it's a willful act because like I said, God doesn't force himself on you. But a lot of us struggle with that because our pride and our ego and we're not willing. A lot of us have been doing some things that aren't truth, that aren't of God and for a lot of years. And so it's really hard when God starts to say, repent turn from those things. It's hard for us to, to lay it down because our pride and my, e our ego says, well, I've been doing this for so many years. I got to see it out. I got to make sure it's fruitful. And a lot of us are trying to squeeze blood out of a rock, right? Like it's not going to be fruitful because it's not founded on the truth of Christ. So we're striving and we're working so hard and we're just wearing ourselves out because we're trying to be Christ to the world instead of pointing them to Christ. And because we've been doing and building so many things for so many years, it's really hard to lay it down. It's really hard because our pride and our ego says, well, you must start what you, you must finish what you start, right? And some things are not to be finished. If the Lord reveals it to you, you need to turn and pivot and repent from that thing and lay it down and walk in the way of the Lord. And then you will experience the fruitfulness of the Lord because it's an, it is a supernatural consequence of obedience. Okay. So do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. Okay. It's not of the father, but it's of the world. So we have to be willing to accept what the Lord tells us is of him and is not of him. Okay. 
And here's what he says. And the world is passing away and all of the lusts with it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Listen to this. He who does the will of God abides forever. Sorry. That's clear. So yeah, you can believe. But you are called to obedience 100% with the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm not, and I always say this, I'm not talking about modifying your behavior. Because if your heart is still wicked, it doesn't matter what your actions do. Because God's going to look at your heart. Because that's where he writes his law now. So he says, renew your mind daily in truth. And as you renew your mind daily in truth, you're going to walk in truth. Truth that leads to life and salvation. Okay, and you will live forever. You will abide forever if you do the will of God, because the will of God keeps you on that narrow path of righteousness. But disobedience leads you up that broad road of destruction. And because God loves you. And because God is a God of righteousness. And because God is a God that saves and delivers his people from destruction. It is a false teaching. For you to think that you can be in Christ and continue a life of sin and continue in sin, period. Because God does not dwell where there is darkness. Lightness and darkness cannot dwell together. So it is a misteaching or a false teaching for people to believe that you can come into the salvation of the Lord and still be unclean. Because he literally cleanses you with his blood and... And teaches you how to walk in the ways of truth and righteousness. And he calls you to that obedience. And he says it would have been better for you not to have come into the truth than for you to come into it and not obey it. You are like a dog returning to your own vomit. So please be careful who you are learning from. Who you are following after. And this other gospel that's being preached out there, that just because you profess belief in Jesus Christ, and that's it, that it doesn't matter how many, it doesn't matter what you do, or if you're obedient to God or not. That's not what he teaches. Okay? Your salvation is secure through your faith in Jesus Christ, but that faith produces obedience. Okay? Okay? And so I know a lot of people say there's some people who teach uh, that it doesn't matter what you do or how you live. If you believe in Jesus Christ, that's it. Uh, he, no, God doesn't. Who leaves their child dirty? Who, who leaves their child in a dirty diaper? Who does that? God does not leave his children dirty. He consecrates you. He sanctifies you. He cleans you up. You don't clean yourself up for him. He does it through the renewing of your mind as you learn to walk in obedience and in step with the Holy Spirit. He places you on that path of righteousness that leads to life and takes you off that broad road of destruction. Okay? And so um, don't fight the rebuke of the Lord. Don't fight his discipline. Don't fight his correction because it's coming from love. It's coming... Um, it's, it's because that's what he does. He calls you out of those things that would destroy you. And a lot of us resist it because we're still in our flesh, because we're prideful, because we don't want to be told what to do, you know, and we just, you know, have shallow faith sometimes and God, you can't hear me at all. I wonder how much of this video I did in silent. I can't message you. You can't hear me at all. Ah! Can you see that? Oh, that makes me sad. <laughs> I might have to re-record this video. All right. Well, I'm going to get off of here and see if it came through. If not, I will come back on. Oh, you can hear me now. Wow. I wonder if my whole video was silent. Okay, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to come back on later and share what the Lord had put on my heart. If this whole video, in fact, was silent, <laughs> um, I'll be back. <laughs> All right.